Hey folks, Dave James here from Wasp Multibeam. Today we're going to be talking about a feature in Wasp that is optional, which I believe that any fisher with their salt should have, and that's called backscatter. So backscatter is often misunderstood. I think uh, too often uh, we, we talk about it in technical means. So what I'm going to do today is just talk about it in terms of the practical sense, the value that it's going to deliver to you as a commercial fisher. So before we go to backscatter, let's look at some of the other technologies that have been used, because for a long, long time, commercial fishers have been interested in trying to find out the hardness of the seafloor. And there's all sorts of reasons for that. Of course, the first and foremost, uh, if you're trolling, you might not want to get fouled up. Um, but, but of course, if you're actually trying to target structure, because we all know structure, uh, habitat is where it's at, and quite often that leads to a buildup of marine life, and where you get that biomass, uh, you're obviously going to get the predatory fish, and for the sports fishers, that's what you're trying to target. So whether you're using backscatter to try and avoid getting entangled, whether you're trying to use backscatter as a source of um, finding your, your wrecks and your, um, your uh, rocky areas for, for targeting fish, um, this is equally applicable. So back in the day, systems like Roxanne, C-Scan were used. Um, in modern times, got lower cost options. A Fruna do a BBDS1. Uh, I think you've got Hondex type sounders. And people are using these tied into programs like Maxi um, or Time Zero, as it's called now, professional, great programs. And um, I'm not trying to, to cry down that technology. Um, great technology for its price point. However, with Wasp, we go a whole level beyond that. The great news is that you can still use Time Zero professional software, which is an amazing software suite. But instead of using a single beam echo sounder as your source of hardness information, you can use the WASP multi-beam system and all the benefits it brings with its super wide coverage and ultra high detail and definition. Those older single beam based technology systems are not stabilized. So as the vessel is moving around, pitching and rolling, uh, with the likes of Furuno, you can stabilize using the heave compensation, but your beam as you're rocking around is still moving through a big arc. With WASP, uh, one of the reasons why our technology is expensive is that it is more than just an acoustic device. We have a, you will need a heading sensor, a position sensor, a, a, an IMU, which is giving us our roll pitch and heave. We compensate for tidal uh, flow adjustments, you know, through the course of the day, year, etc. We also can compensate for sea, uh, the seawater or, or lake temperature and uh, in the case of sea salinity. So what this means is that as WASP is going along, even outside of uh, the, the discussion around the, uh, the backscatter, just when, we, when we're mapping with our bathymetry, which is what we call making the pretty pictures of the seafloor, the shape, everything is georeferenced. So every dot we put down on the seafloor has a latitude, a longitude and a depth reference around it. And everything is stabilized. As your vessel is pitching and rolling and you know, moving around and you know, dropping off waves, the WASP is constantly compensating through those sensors that are connected to it, which is why it's so critical that the WASP is set up properly, commissioned properly by your technician. What that means is that we're putting down hundreds of seafloor points that are all geo-referenced. And this makes WASP very different from any other system because we, you no longer have to um, rely on your memories and, and, and you also you know that those data points are accurate on the seafloor. Of course, on a, on, a, on a better day, you're going to map much more precisely than on a, than on a rough day where you might be moving a bit and those, those sensors are trying to compensate. But still, even on rougher days, you're going to map that, that structure and you're going to map those, um, those fish targets if you've got the water column targets and you're going to map that backscatter, which we're about to talk about. Our SWAF, which is what we call our beam pattern, is made up of 26 elements which generates a pattern that is 120 degrees wide and three and a half degrees fore and aft. So when you compare that to a traditional sounder, uh, which could be anywhere from say five degrees to, to 30 degrees, depending on the frequency and the, the depth you're fishing, uh, we have a much wider coverage, but also we have a much, much narrower coverage fore and aft, which gives us our resolution. We, we've got really, really good um, detail of the seafloor. So by being 120 degrees wide, we could gener generate over 224 detection points on the seafloor. In shallow water, we put down pings um, up to 38 pings per second, incredibly quick, which means we can map at speed. So, so long as you don't have air passing over the transducer, WASP is unlike other technologies, we can be going flat tack and we can still be actually mapping the seafloor. Uh, whereas on a conventional sounder, it will completely manipulate the image. 
That is to say, if I was to sink the ancient pyramid of Giza on the seafloor and to go steaming over it at speed, it would end up looking like a pinnacle. If I was to go over the same pyramid of Giza on the same part slowly, it would look more like Rangitoto Island in, in New Zealand. So that's where your single beam echo sounders are fallible. The speed at which you go, the speed at which your screen scrolls, there's a lot to interpret, a lot to change, and a lot to misinterpret. With WASP, what you see is what you get. Everything is georeferenced. So all I can say is if you go over structure and you see it with your WASP and you came back and remap it, it's just going to map it in more detail. So it's a bit like putting on a pair of glasses. You see it's there, but it comes even more into focus with more pings. What we are seeing is we're seeing a really, really wide span, three to one almost. So if you're in 100 meters of water, almost 300 meters across the seafloor. So 100 yards for Americans, uh, depth is going to be around about 300 yards across the seafloor. And hundreds of points of reference across that. And so we use, um, we have this ability with backscatter uh, using sort of a light intensity to work out whether the seafloor we're passing over is harder or softer or, or, or varying shape. Just a reminder that the reddish colors are your harder colors through the yellows and greens through to the blue, which is your softest color. You could be passing over a completely flat area of seafloor. You could change over into your backscatter mode if you pay for that license. And now it will show you the bottom composition, even if it's flat. And what a lot of people are uh, surprised to learn is that the the seafloor can actually vary quite considerably in quite short spans. And um, so as you're going along, you could turn on this backscatter mode and we'll show you if there's any hard pans on the seafloor. Uh, I've thrown up some pictures uh, on the presentation to have a look at, look at here of beach scenes, because I think what, what you see when you go to the beach is, is often what is actually replicated out on the water. Mm -hmm. And people tend to think of the seafloor as in being rock or not rock, and that's not the case. You know, sometimes you have little boulder type rocks out there. Sometimes you might have sheet rock. Sometimes you might have rock that actually doesn't even penetrate the surface. It's got a thin sandy crust. All of those areas um, are, are, are often uh, ripe with, um, you know, that, that creates habitat that's, uh, that's ripe with sea life. So whether you're chasing crabs or, or, cra or, or crayfish or lobster uh, or even species of fish, that can be huge. I, I've got clients here in New Zealand that use this on, on flat grounds where the, the rock barely penetrates the surface. You, you, you can't even detect it on a traditional single beam echo sounder. And they're fishing for species like Moki. In fact, one of my commercial clients, he no longer, he does fishing charters, he no longer goes and fishes any structure because the structure in the area is well targeted by most fishers after many, many generations of being sounded. And so he is now fishing purely on areas that are flat, low lying, and he's picking up the fish that forage on the edge of those, edge of those hard structures. So it's things like Moki grounds, which is a species we get down here. So I, I think the other thing for crayfishers, um, we, we, in New Zealand and Australia, the fishers have got things they call wasp pots. So what is a wasp pot? Well, right now you might be used to going and fishing a bit of structure. And even if you have wasp on board, you'll, you'll, you'll go and fish around that structure. Wasp is really great for getting into lay pots and those little cracks and crevices in the rocks. You know, crayfish are like humans. They... They obviously go for safety, so they tend to take, you know, if there's any sort of um, fissures in the rocks or, or, or gullies, or they'll, they'll walk through those. It's, it's, it's safer, and like humans, they're also a bit lazy, or they'll take the direct path. So if you could lay your pots there, you'll increase your catch. Um, but beyond that, if you move away from that structure, you'll be surprised how often that same rock structure comes to the surface again. It could be 200, 300 meters or yards or whatever it is away from that. But as you move away from that structure, you'll be su surprised to see how often that rock surface the structure either comes to the surface and just breaks it or it's just under it. And so our clients have been laying pots there. They call wasp pots because you wouldn't lay a fishing pot there, a trap there, unless you knew that the, um, that the seafloor came to the surface there, the rock, and they are getting resident crayfish there away. So that could what often mean that they can diversify. Um, obviously, they, in New Zealand, we're quoted. Maybe they're in your country too. So it's not about trying to increase your catch, it's about trying to, to take from vary where your catch comes from, not hammer one particular area and um, you know, sh share, the, um, share the take, the harvest for various different areas. So that's been big for WASP um, in terms of backscatter. We've seen a huge benefit for trawlermen in the fact that we can help them to avoid entanglement in areas where there is foul. But what it's meant is that there are areas on charts that are written, you'll know them if, in your fishing area, if you're a commercial fisher, 
you'll see on the chart plot of big areas of, of no marks on your screen and uh, quite often they're referred to as graveyards um, and nobody fishes in there because um, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, people got ensnared there with their gear and uh, they no longer go in there. Well, what you'll find now is that uh, take your wasp in there, map with your bathymetry, but also map with your backscatter. And what you'll find is that invariably there's areas you can fish through that you might only be able to put a, a half an hour tow in, but if you could put a tow in through there and nobody else can and safely, um, you're bound to get a bumper catch there. Uh, and same goes for deep drop fishing. You know, if you can go out there and find those spots of, of fowl in the middle of nowhere, uh, whether they penetrate the surface on bathymetry or whether they just the backscatter, can make all the difference to your fishing. So check out our tips and tutorials we share from time to time. You can see how to use the backscatter. Fully encourage you uh, if you've got Generation 3 and you've got that Bluebeam program, that's our latest software. Use your function key 5 on the top of your keyboard, F5, to switch between bathymetry and backscatter. Bathymetry is the seafloor shape. Backscatter is the seafloor hardness, the intensity to help you determine whether it's rock, sands, mud, etc. Use the F3 key when you're in either of those two modes to auto scale. So if you're in bathymetry mode, it will auto scale the colors to the view that you're in. So if you zoom in and press F3, it'll conveniently scale the colors from deepest to shallowest. And if you're in backscatter mode, if you zoom into an area, press F3 and it'll auto scale the intensity. We can represent the backscatter by grayscale or by colors. Uh, highly recommend you use colors and you'll be able to see um, those all those different shadings from, from red being your sort of harder grounds through to your, your yellows and, uh, and then right down to your yellows and greens, right down to your blue colors, which is your softer ground. And what's also surprising uh, is, is how often you'll find an area of hard foul and then there'll be a real soft pan um, nearby. And so sometimes some species you may be looking to target, um, they might like those softer sort of grounds. So it's not just about finding hard ground. It can also be about finding those softer grounds. And um, so you might be looking for particular areas, even if you're just towing out over um, sandy seafloor and you're looking, you know, you might be fishing for flats, your soles and th those sort of species, and you want a particular seafloor composition. That's where backscatter can really come into its own. So hope you enjoyed that. If you have backscatter and you're not using Get out there and uh, get that backscatter cranking. And I would love it if you um, get those results, as I've no doubt you will. Uh, any questions, feel free to message us. And if you get those results, please take some photos, take some video, or at the minimum, come back and tell us how much of a difference it's made to your fishing. Because, um, yeah, that wasp backscatter is something magnificent. And share the word. Thanks, team. Tight lines, and catch up with you soon.